Gaming consoles tend to almost always be gray, square, or both. Like maybe this one, or maybe this one. This one? That's a, uh, <clears throat> that's a robot? Here's one that's as gray and square as they come. Wait a minute, I didn't even put in a game. That's because, unlike newer consoles, the Vectrex comes with a game, Mindstorm, aka better version of Astro. I think I'm worse at this than I am Asteroids. This one here was made in 1982, but the production for them lasted from 82 to 84, making them a little bit rare and pricey. In fact, the average price for one now on eBay is $500 or $600. While at release, mm, adjusting for inflation, they were... Oh, never mind. Anyways, when you think of a video game, you probably think of this. Pixels. And not those ones from Japan. Pixels didn't used to be the standard. In fact, look at Pong, Asteroids, Lunar Lander. These are called vector graphics, or you know, straight lines. Many arcade games of the late 70s and early 80s had them, and if you were some dreamy-eyed kid, that's all you wanted. Thanks to its special screen, you can duplicate the exact look and feel of those old arcade machines. Just pop out the arcade-style controller, turn on the power, which is uh, also the volume, Adjust the brightness on the back, and bingo. And yes, that's a Player 2 controller port. Okay, time for a physical game, Star Trek. Or not, I can't seem to get it to work. So uh, we'll just put on something else. Here. While I can't say I care about it at all, I would care for, you know, some color. That line of questioning is what brought us the most advanced invention of the last thousand years. Behold. Plastic. Any Vectrex game you'd buy new from the store would come with one of these overlays to correspond with whatever game you were playing. Even Mindstorm had one. And I gotta hand it to them, it's uh, it's interesting. That's not the only additional add-on they made for the system though. There is also a pin and goggles, but uh, good luck affording those. There are around 30 games made for the system and a handful of them require one of those accessories to work. So uh, just go ahead and delete those from your memory. So with a small library of 25 games or so, you can actually go down the Virtual Boy route and try buying them all. But some of them are kind of pricey. So here's what I would recommend. Get yourself one of these, a multi-card. Depending on the card, this saves you the trouble of buying dozens of games, or maybe even all of them. Want to select another game from the list, but don't want to turn on and off the console every time? Well, like any good retro game console, it has a reset button. Well, is this thing any good? Is it worth a month of child support? Well, in the words of that one song, Man. Fuck them kids, bro. Also, this thing has a carry handle, which makes a little bit more sense in the GameCubes.